So what I titled this is, um, does it matter what we eat? It's so much bigger than physical food, man. Like I wanna express that what's in the, the scriptures we have to contend with. Um, I didn't write anything down on this, but you know, the Apostle Paul um, says all scripture is God breathed. It's valuable for uh, teaching, for correcting, um, you know, and it's to fully equip you, you know, as a, a believer in the Messiah, like to equip you in the faith. So I think that um, the word is alive. It's sharper than a double-edged sword, according to Hebrews 4.12. And it also is going to examine and cut in the places where we need to be cut. So my question was, does it matter what we eat? Um, because I think there's a lot of people who are believers in, in Christ and Jesus, and they sort of come into some of these people who are teaching Hebrew roots or Messianic Judaism. And um, I think when you start to put a label on something and you see somebody practicing that way and they're they're doing something that's you know legalistic or whatever, then they just throw it out altogether. So I don't even like the, the label, but it, I would say that I've learned a great deal through um, this, the Messianic teachings, uh, particularly Rabbi Greg Hirschberg of Beth Yeshua International. Um, like, if you guys haven't followed his, his um, YouTube page at Getzel, unbelievable. And, and the, the teachings are, there, you can pick any one of them and you're going to hear God speak. It's, it's just that good um, because God is good. And, you know, so I, I've learned through that, but there are a lot of Messianic synagogues and places where you're going to hear stuff and see stuff and you're going to go, wow, they, they really are sort of um, legalistic and, and it feels like bondage-like. It's If you are obeying the commandments and they feel like bondage, then don't do it. Like, you're, you're, you're going to hurt yourself, okay? Um, people that, that do that, they end up losing their love and were warned in Revelation to the church of Ephesus that... You know, you're doing all these things. You're a good church, but you've lost the love you had at first. Like, it's really dangerous. Um, and if you're not excited about following God and you don't feel his presence in you, then, then like, something's off, okay? So pray. Um, that doesn't mean you go down this path of, like, the all-grace church where they're going to be lawless. No, that's that's a, a, a gutter. That's a ditch. Just like the all-truth is a ditch, okay? Um, yes. So I, I'm going to just say, like, where do we get this? Like, what does it matter what we eat? And so we got to go to the Torah. The Torah, the first five books, the word Torah actually in Hebrew means instructions. Um, and it also is translated as law in uh, many of the, the English translations of the Bible. Um, and in, in the New Testament, it is um, nomos, which is law or instructions, but it's the same thing. It's, it's the word of God, okay? So we have to consider like all scripture. So I would say contextually, whatever I'm saying, please, you know, take it for what I'm, what it's worth, test it, pray, read the scriptures. If you want to write them down, write them down, read them. When I listen to teachings, it's good, but it doesn't stick most of the time, if not at all, unless I sit there and I actually read and ask God to teach me. Because the Holy Spirit, the, the, the set apart spirit that Yeshua said that the Father would send in his name, would be like him, he's going to teach you these things. You look at uh, John 14, 26, and you look at, um, you know, grace, the grace is the teacher, right? And Titus 2. So I did a, a couple posts on that today. But um, w you can find this in Leviticus chapter 11, and you can also find this in Deuteronomy 14. Um, I will, I'll, I'll go in Deuteronomy 14. I think it's a little bit more uh, abbreviated, but I want to tell you that this comes from the word of God. So Deuteronomy 14, I'm going to read chapter 14. I'll start in verse 2. Verse 1 talks about he's the Lord, but like don't gash yourself like the pagan. Like he's saying like you be the set apart people. But he says, because you people are set apart as holy for Adonai your God. Okay, real set, quick segue. John 17, 17, and I think John 17, 21. Yeshua is talking about those sheep that would come into the fold. That's you and me 2,000 years later. He said, set them apart, Father, by the means of your truth, for holiness, because your word is truth. So he's he's saying the same thing that the Father says. So he says, Adonai, your God, the Lord your God, has chosen you to be a unique treasure out of all the peoples in the face of the earth. Okay, so we would say, oh, he's speaking to Israel. But think about this. Are you a segulot? Are you a set apart, you know, a, a special treasure in God for to God? I mean, 
yes, like you are. So if we think that you're a uh, set apart or a special treasure, um, then he's speaking to you because you're a set apart people. Um, standing in the gap. I, I'm not taking joiners right now. I got to get through this. Um, there, there could be a time for us to do that. Um, but I'm not, I'm just saying right now, I'm not doing that. Um, it says, okay, so it says, you are not to eat anything, it says in the complete Jewish Bible, disgusting. The animals which which you may eat are ox, sheep, goat, deer, gazelle, roebuck, ibex, antelope, oryx, and mountain sheep. So there's he gives specific instructions of the things that you can eat. Any animal, now here's what he says, any animal that has a separated hoof that is completely divided and also choose the cud. So both, these animals you may eat, but... You're not to eat those who only chew the cud or only have a divided hoof. For example, the camel, the hare, the coney are unclean for you because they chew the cud, but they don't have a separated hoof. While the pig is unclean for you because although it has a separated hoof, it does not chew the cud. You're not to eat meat from those or touch their carcasses. Um, and then it says, of all the live, all that lives in the water, you may eat these things. Anything in the water that has fins and scales, these you may eat. But whatever lacks fins and scales, you are not to eat. It is unclean for you. Okay. First, like I was talking about, this was given to Israel, right? At Sinai or Horeb. First, the question is, are you part of Israel and the covenant promises made to Israel? That's a big question. Um, I don't, I'm not going to go down that path right now, but it's a big question. But the question would be, where would you know that? If you read the book of Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 2, the book of, of uh, the Ephesians, the epistle, was um, written by Shaul, Paul, um, to the, the Messianic community or the church that was in Ephesus. Now, the thing that is um, the big theme of Ephesians is the body of Messiah. Um, it's the body of Messiah. Colossians speaks about the head and being Yeshua and having the mind of Messiah. Um, but Jesus instituted the new covenant, Mick, right? But that was at Passover nearly 2,000 years ago. The question is, did he change the Torah or the instructions of the Father? Or, or just a question, did he come to fully preach them um, the way they were intended to be obeyed? Okay, people say in Matthew 5, um, Jesus raised the bar. I've believed that for a while, but then I realized he wasn't raising the bar because that would mean that that he made it harder, right? He didn't make it harder. He he taught the right way. He taught the truth from the Word of God, the Torah of God, so that the people could understand it. He said, "You have heard, right? Don't don't murder." But he's like, he taught you what it really meant to murder. It wasn't just physically murdering somebody. It means killing their soul, right? Embarrassing them or calling them a, a, your brother a fool. He's saying you don't commit adultery. Like you don't actually physically sleep with another woman that you're not married to, but you lust with your eyes. So he's saying the sins are from the heart. And he's trying to teach people the spiritual application of the Torah. And, you know, people want to make it, um, you know, the 613. Like you're, you're, you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to figure out the 613. Um, I did that before. And it <laughs> it's crazy, right? Like, there's a lot of them that you, you can't even, you wouldn't be able to keep because they're not even applicable because you're not a woman if you're a man or you're not living in the land or you're not a priest or there's there's no temple, like all these things, right? So um, you're going to get different versions, right? But you're going to get 33,000 different views on this. Um, but consider this, the Father and Yeshua are one and the same instructions in the, in the Torah apply equally to the native born right? Those who were born in the camp and the foreigner that joined Israel. So we're Gerim, we've joined Israel. That, um, you know, Yeshua prayed that we'd be one. There's, what is he saying in Ephesians? There's one Lord, there's one faith, there's one mikvah or immersion or baptism, and there's one God and Father of all. There's only one God, right? So then why would God say to some of his children, hey, you guys, you eat this, but you guys, um, you adopted kids because we're adopted, right? Spiritually, right? It says that we call him Abba Father by the spirit of adoption. But you can eat these things that I told them not to eat because it's an abomination. But it's an abomination, he says. Like, it's disgusting. And you're like, but anyway, that doesn't make sense, does it? Also, think of this too, just for, you know, again, I'm just presenting this. Where it falls, I don't know, right? But in Genesis chapter 7, when Noah was um, getting, you know, building the ark and getting on the ark, 
in chapter 7, because everyone learns only two by two, they went on to the, he put the animals on. But Genesis 7, uh, I'll read 1 through 5, it says that the Lord, Adonai, said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone in this generation are righteous before me. They, they obeyed God. They, they feared him reverently, and they, they, they had a, um, uh, an upright walk, a yashar, like an upright walk. So he says, Of every clean animal, you are to take seven couples, and of the animals that are not clean, one couple. Also, of the birds in the, of the, in the air, take seven couples in order to preserve their species throughout the earth. For in seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. All these numbers mean something. I will wipe out every living thing that I've made from the face of the earth. Hear this. Noah did all that Adonai ordered him to do. I don't think Noah was like, God, why do I need to take seven of the of the, the clean animals, the couples of the clean animals and one of the unclean? Do you think he, he had an internet that he could watch a YouTube video? Do you think he sat in, in the church, you know, every week or, you know, on Wednesdays and Sundays or whatever, Saturdays? Or did he hear the voice of God and say, yes, I will do it? Like, he did everything the Lord or obeyed him. Like, we can still learn from Noah, but here's the thing. Did God create clean and unclean animals only for the children of Israel? Or did he do it in the beginning? And was there a purpose for it? So anyway, there's a deeper message here because seriously, while I don't eat unclean animals, I will say knowingly, like I won't go out and order, you know, um, a pork roast or whatever, right? I don't do that. Um, I, I have to believe that this is not as big of an issue as so many in the Messianic community make it. But do I make it an issue? No, I don't make it an issue. But I, if we're going to teach, you know, what God's truth is, then it's like, question is, well, what's true? But what's true is not new and what's new is not true. But listen, the, the thing is, is, was it just for that time or is it for today? I think it's deeper, right? This is one of the things I learned um, from Rabbi Greg. It was priceless. Um, he says, eat animals with a split hoof, right? It's a reflection of you wanting to be separated from the world. You eat the animal that chews the cud because it feasts on the word, right? So these two things stood out to me when I heard this, um, which was, it's both a split hoof and choose the cut because there's people who could be separated, right, for God, but they're getting, they're, they're feasting on the word. But what word? It's, it's a defiled word, right? So he's like, you don't want to eat that, right? You're not going to eat something that, that has a split hoof like a pig that, that chews on the cud that's not of the, the true manna, right, the true word. But also if it doesn't have a split hoof, but it chews the word, there's people who were in the word and they're getting the word, but they're not separating themselves from the world. So it's, it's both. It's both. Same thing with um, eating fish that has fins so that you have the word and can nav navigate through life, the waters of life. Or you eat fish that has scales so that you can wear the armor of God, the scales, right? So I would encourage you that if you haven't watched the series from Rabbi Greg, Messianic Judaism 101, he does such a beautiful job. Look at, he bashes both sides of the fence, which I really appreciate. And um, when I watch his teachings, um, I get a conviction from the Holy Spirit, okay? And it's not the messenger, it's the message that we should we have to wrestle with, okay? So I encourage people, if you want a, a message of truth, um, he's, he's one of a kind in that, in that realm. Um, so the other thing is, um, not just spiritually, right? So now let's talk about the physical aspect, because I think if we just leave it at that, it's sort of like, yeah, like, Okay, that's still not for me today, but let's think about this. Um, and I learned this from my, a doctor that I used to see, uh, David Jockers up in Kennesaw, um, and he's an incredible um, nutritionist, uh, uh, chiropractor. I learned a ton from him, but what he says is that, and, and I've studied this a little bit, but I like to refer to the doctors or people that know these things. Pigs have a very high toxic load, making them unsafe for human consumption. Pigs scavenge anything they come in contact with on a farm. They eat insects. They even eat their own feces and even eat their own dead carcasses. And they've been known to kill their own children or their babies and eat their young. Like, that's messed up, right? That's disgusting. He says, their he says the digestive system of a pig is unique in that it metabolizes food very quickly through one stomach in a process that takes four hours, okay? Now, a cow, I think has three stomachs, takes 24 hours to digest what's eaten and is able to get rid of the excess toxins during the digestive process. 
The pig's digestive system does not allow for this, and the toxins are carried into the fat cells and the organs of the pig itself. Um, it can produce the following um, various types of tapeworms, um, something called PRRS, it's a respiratory syndrome, um, Nipah virus, um, Menangal virus, hepatitis E, and also uh, if you want to do a little bit of recent study, look at uh, every virus that comes out of uh, China, like the swine flu, right? Or look at the coronavirus um, from bats, right? They're, it's an unclean animal. Not supposed to eat it. But I will say this to people who I know are, are God-fearers and they know they love the Lord. And I've had people say this on Twitter. They're like, don't touch my bacon, man. And I get it. I live in the South. Like, everything's got bacon on it. So, you know, I don't, it doesn't bother me. People have asked me like, oh, you, will you go to a restaurant that serves bacon? And I'm like, of course I will. But like, I'm not keeping kosher because kosher is different than eating um, uh, clean and unclean. Um, so you'd say like, oh, that was just the Old Testament. So, okay, the couple of things, and I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I want to share a couple of things that I think will help, hopefully spiritually, because this, this helps you physically fine, but it's, you know, what it, Apostle Paul says, physical exercise is of importance, but spiritual exercise is of most importance. It's greater, right? So, okay, in the New Testament, Jesus, Yeshua, he cast demons into pigs, right? Thousands of them, and they ran over the cliff and they died. He knew they were going to die, right? But here's the thing. <laughs> If he thought that they were food, there's no way he would have wasted food. No way. Because we know that when he fed the 5,000 from fish and the loaves that multiplied, he the 12 baskets, right? Where he said, pick up the leftovers. We know Yeshua didn't waste food. So that's just one side note. But the one that really people um, talk about is like Mark 7, um, which wasn't really about food. But they, they added this parenthetical that Yeshua declared all things clean or all foods clean and you know, my argument there is that that food was never, like pig was never considered food. So yes, all foods were clean. But if a pig never was categorized as food, then, then who cares, right? Anyway, I'm not going to argue that point. That's fine. But Acts 10, you know, Mick, it's clear, right? Like Acts 10, the sheep, you know, came down. God showed Peter, kill and eat. They were unclean. But if you don't read that in context or you don't read the whole chapter, Acts 10, you'll see that that's not really what God was telling Peter. He didn't think so because he needed like three times, right? Which is a key number as well. He was perplexed. Like, like how could, I can't eat anything unclean. First, like, how could Peter not know? He was with Yeshua for three and a half years. Don't you think he would have said, hey, Peter, you know, don't worry about eating unclean and clean food anymore. It's no big deal. In fact, he said, don't go the way of the Gentile. So even Peter was like, I, like, I don't get this, right? Like, I know the truth, but... He went with the men that came because God told him to go with him. And then he says in verse 27 and 28 of Acts, he says, As he talked with them, Cornelius and his whole household, Peter went inside and found many people gathered. He said to them, You are well aware for a man who is a Jew to have no association with someone who belongs to another people or to come and visit him. It's something that just isn't done. Okay. So Peter's like saying, hey, I'm not even supposed to come in your house, right? But he says, but, but, but God, right, has shown me not to call any person uncommon or unclean. I mean, it was about people. Okay. Verse 34 of that same chapter. Then Peter addressed them, Kepha. He says, I now understand, I now understand the vision that God does not play favorites, but whoever fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him, no matter what people they belong to. So was Cornelius some random guy? No, see verse 2 of Acts 10. He was a devout man. So listen to the characteristics of, of this Roman soldier. He was devout. He was a God-fearer, so he believed in the one true God. As his whole household, think, remember Noah, his whole household? They were upright. So this was an upright guy, right? It says he gave gener generously to help the poor. So charity, he was giving. And he prayed regularly regularly, regularly to God. Think about that. Like, it's, it's like God's going to come to people who are seeking him, right? Like, he's always after us. But he's like, w w are, we, are we devout? Sure, there's a lot of people who are devout, but they don't know him yet. Do you at least acknowledge him? Do you know his son? You know, like... It's like 
he he had a, a generous heart. He was giving. Um, I think they even said he built a synagogue for him. Like, or maybe that was the other um, Roman soldier. Sorry, sidebar. So, okay, am I still making this a big deal? No, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not trying to make it a big deal. I'm not. But the question is, what? Like, why do why do people think it is a big deal? I think the physical teaches the spiritual. You know, was was the deliverance from Egypt, you know, symbolic of our deliverance from slavery to sin? Of course, that was physical. Like, we don't go back to that physical, right? Because we weren't there, but we honor that. And then we also see symbolically the, the redemption that was given to us through Yeshua the Messiah. Um, I'm going to tell you a personal testimony. Why do not I eat um, unclean knowingly? Again, knowingly. Because I I've eaten stuff that's unclean, not knowing it. I've eaten, I've, I've eaten um, green beans. I think that were made in lard or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I taste. I'm like, is this, you know, it's a clean unclean issue. It's not salvation. Like you're unsaved now because you had a, a piece of pork. Like you. But the question would be like logically speaking, like once you know something's true or not true, will you still do it? That's that's the point of it, right? Once you know. Um, um, yeah, let me let me do that. I didn't have it planned, but I'm going to read this. Um, Peter again, right? He wrote uh, epistles, two of them, or he he has two epistles. Peter. Um, so Second Peter chapter one verse five says, "For this very reason, try your hardest." Right? People are saying you're working out your salvation. It says, "Try your hardest to furnish your faith and add to it." It says in other versions, "With goodness." Now, goodness, like moral character. Um, be a God fear, be generous, be, you know, kind. And then he says, goodness, add to it with knowledge. So knowledge, like you're going to gain knowledge. Where are you going to gain knowledge? Word of God. You know, shepherds that are teaching the, the sheep, not clowns that are entertaining the goats. That's what we have in the churches today. And then knowledge with self-control. So now that you know stuff, then the next add thing you add to is self-control. And then self-control with perseverance. So now that I'm, you know, I'm going to persevere in my self-control and then perseverance with godliness. So you'll become more godly. Is it wrong to be godly? No, of course, we're supposed to be more godly. But let me say this. There's the next is brotherly affection and then brotherly, brotherly affection with love. So well, you, you can't really love somebody with, with in teaching and truth until you understand and you've gone through that fire yourself. I'm not saying you can't lead people to the, the Lord. Of course you can. But Furnishing your faith? Yes. It's progression. You grow in your faith. You grow in, in understanding. And when you learn and you apply that understanding, your your spirituality, your temple, the tabernacle that, that is in you, the Holy Spirit will increase and your flesh will decrease. It's just the way it works. Okay, sidebar. So me, um, why, I, I gave up eating unclean you know, before I started doing anything like keeping a Sabbath or doing the Feast of God because I was presented with it. I read it. And like I said, someone told me about it, but I read it and I was convicted. I'm like, and then I was like, this is silly. Like I actually spoke to God. I said, God, this is silly. Why would I, this is pretty straightforward. Like, don't do that. Okay. So I won't. So think about it. Okay. This is what happens now. People go, oh, you're, you think you're better. No, I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not even more healthy than anybody else, to be honest with you. Um, but I think about God, even when I'm looking at a menu or going to a grocery store, I look at the package and I'm like, God, what do you think? But I talk to him about everything, right? And so that might make you crazy, but I don't know. Do you talk to him about everything? You should. So does a sheep know his voice? That means he speaks to us today. So he's going to speak to you if you're listening. Um, but when we demonstrate an obedience, even in things that we don't understand totally, like Noah, right? Like he's going to talk to you. Um, the second thing is it builds self-control. So like I would love to eat something that tastes good, right? I'm like, well, I won't. Why? Fruits of the Spirit, self-control. Am I doing it in my own flesh? People can do it in their own flesh or you can make it a spiritual thing, right? Does it create opportunities to witness to people? Yeah, it does at times, especially Jewish people because then they'll say, oh, you're not eating pork. Are you Jewish? No, but let me tell you about the Messiah. It happens, man. Like you might think that's crazy and maybe that's not your call. I, I meet people who are, are Jews all the time. I love them just like I love a non-Jewish person and I want them to know Messiah. I don't want them to know Yeshua. But there's there there are people that 
they, they're Torah observant. And when they meet a, a believer in Jesus that that obeys the, the commandments or tries to obey, because I don't perfectly and no one does, but if you're at least doing those things, now they're like, no, you, you don't do what we do. Yeah, why do you do it? Because Messiah, he's, he's the Messiah, Messiah of Israel, he's your Messiah. And it sort of wakes them out, but now they've got to contend with it, right? Um, but the other thing is Yeshua didn't, you know, eat unclean. And it's like, how do you know? Well, if he did, he would have been breaking Torah. If he broke the Torah, he was a, he would have been a sinner, and then he wouldn't have been the spotless lamb. So we know he didn't. But that doesn't, he's not looking at that. He never really preached about that. He's hes saying, like, the character of Messiah, right? Obedience. And then the, other, the last thing, the reason why I don't is because God said so. Like, it's that basic to me. It's that basic to me. Um, but that was the Old Testament, you know, okay, so that by that rationale, I would say, if someone says that was the Old Testament, now hear me out. You might think I'm a jerk for talking like this, but I'm going to say this. Um, by the rationale of we can eat something that God says we shouldn't eat, okay, because Jesus paid my sin debt. So my question would be, did Christ, the Messiah, have to be executed on a stake bloody sacrifice killed so that we could eat ham on Easter like we can eat pork I mean like does it make you unsaved if you're eating ham no I'll say that emphatically no it doesn't make you unsaved it'll make you unclean and your health may suffer but to me it's an attitude of the heart okay if you look up Isaiah 65 and 66 and look at the health issues that we have because we eat unclean you know, it's in everything, you know, even our food is contaminated. If people want to know why we have health issues we have, the cancers we have, um, the sicknesses that we have, the allergies that we have, the things we didn't have when I was younger, right? You guys know better, right? You have peanut-free zones and, you know, um, gluten allergies and stuff. That stuff wasn't even around. It wasn't because... It's not just that we're eating on clean animals. We contaminated the food, the food sources with gen genetically modified organisms. We've we've created a, a land that doesn't rest on the seventh year as commanded by Abi Yah, our Father God. So what 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 do you think the output's going to be? See see the issue isn't can we find organic food? It's because we're sinners. We've sinned. Our land is defiled, and so when we have a virus come in and it starts to kill people, it, it's because God's judging the people. Like, is he judging you if you have it? Like, I don't think so. But, you know, maybe not. But we don't know. Like, God knows. He knows the individual hearts of every person. And while, while we say God doesn't micromanage, I've heard that, he's intimately nigh to those who, who are his. He knows the very numbers of hair in your head, is what he says. And, like, a sparrow doesn't fall to the ground without him knowing or approving of it. So... Do you think that he doesn't understand the, the pain or the anxiety or the health problems you have? Of course he does. It says that he can empathize with our weaknesses because while he was in the flesh, he was tempted in every single way. The only difference is he didn't sin. So he gave us an example of not to sin. And sin starts in the heart, okay? So, look, it's physical and spiritual, body and soul. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says that your body is the temple like of, of, of the Lord, right? And we would say, spiritually speaking, yeah, sure, but how about physically? Um, 2 Corinthians 7, 1 says, Therefore, my dear friends, this is Apostle Paul, since we have these promises, right, from God, this freedom we have from God, right, from sin, let us purify ourselves from everything that can defile either the body or the spirit. You're, you're tripartite. You're made up of spirit, too. Your body in your spirit, in your soul and spirit. And strive to be completely holy out of reverence for God. It says, be holy for I am holy. Peter says it, Paul says it, and even the Lord God says it in, in Leviticus 11, right after he's talking about food. He's talking spiritually. I think he's also talking physically. So the, the bottom line is, does you know eating clean mean I'm more holy than someone else? Give me a break. Like, of course not. Does it mean I'm more saved because I eat clean or I celebrate the Sabbath or the Feast of God? No, it doesn't make me more, more saved. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory, and nobody is justified by their self-righteous deeds or legalistic observance of their religious practices, even if they think they're from the Word of God. Look, a lot of religions, 
they they use the word of God to say this is why we do these things. But are they are they really doing them the way God called them to do it? Look, bottom line, like obedience, blessings, disobedience, curses. That didn't change. And people say it's not a salvation issue. Okay. I think food, the food dietary restrictions are, are the least of the commandments. Um, in fact, the question of does it matter in a way is if, if insincere demonstrates a rebellious nature. You know, my attitude is, God, if you said so, then like, okay, I'll do it. Like, you know, when he says, you know, when I said like, oh, does it matter? I was like, does God, does it matter? Like from the attitude, my heart was like, show me. You know, and, and he wants to see if we believe him or not. Our faith, we're being tested. He tests your hearts. Food is the least of them, right? But I'm like, no biggie. Like, if you can't give up food, then like, what else would you not give up? So the question is, you know, we probably will make excuses for this, but many will say that all sin is sin. And I'd say, okay, but there's sins that don't lead to death. That's what First John 5 says. But what happens when we dismiss the least of the commandments? Yeshua says in Matthew 5, 19, those who teach or disobey and teach the least of these commandments um, to disobey the least of these commandments will be least in the kingdom. So you're in. But do you just want to be in? You know, that's the question. And if what I'm saying makes you upset, you know, then what can I say? I'm not, you know, presenting it, um, you know, to hurt anybody. I'm just presenting it. Um, on scripture, I'm presenting scripture like anyone else. It's certainly not a judgment or a condemnation. I, I have many friends that I call brother or sister that will eat, you know, uh, bacon on their hamburger in front of me. It's not an issue for me. And they even know that, you know, I don't eat like that. It doesn't change it. Our conversations don't change. Um, we, we love the Lord. We talk about him, you know, and look, if it's not a conviction for you, then don't do it. Like God will convict you of it. It's not condemnation, it's conviction, right? So um, it was a conviction to me. So I stopped, but I'm telling you, it gave me the ability to um, share the gospel in a different way. Maybe you don't need that. Maybe that's not the issue. Maybe somebody's got a sexual morality issue. That's more important, according to the, the Word of God, according to Acts 15, the moral character, like the, the, the obvious things that are that people are in deep in sin about, okay? Okay. Um, um, what else? Um, it's just, again, I, I'm not going to make it an issue, right? Does it, does it make me love anyone less? No, of course not. Stop that. Like, yes, it, 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 it makes people cast stones at me though, sadly. Um, and I'm okay with it. I've gotten used to it. Um, but the next topic that I might tackle, um, not today. I just think I probably said enough for today, but the feast of, of Yah, Lord, God, Adonai, and why I don't celebrate traditional Christian holidays, um, you may find my take similar to the dietary instructions. Why? Because it's not in the Bible. I can't find it. Um, I can find where God does not want me to do certain things. So you would say, Mick, you know, there's a tradition there. We keep it and we do it to honor God. Good, like, go for it. And you know, if people want to talk about truth and we want to understand it in context. As we prepare for the coming of Messiah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, th there's going to be plenty of people in the kingdom, I believe, and I know a brother on here disagrees with me. They're sitting in the pews on Sunday right now. They, they don't really know these things, but they love Yeshua. They love Jesus, and they're broken before him, and they're crying out, and they're sharing the gospel with people. Um, I believe that's true. Some people think the mark of the beast is Sunday. I, I you know, maybe it's partially that, but I think it's more the system of the church that's the problem. And there's plenty of uh, churches that meet on Saturdays that are in bondage to, to, to legalism, which, you know, that's what Paul was speaking about. He wasn't talking about obeying the commandments or disobeying the commandments. No, he was talking about your legalistic observance and then putting it on other people that they had to circumcise the, their flesh in order to be saved. Like, Man, it's like, it's so much deeper than that, guys. It's so much deeper. Um, so anyway, the accusations that come at me is, Mick, you're bringing people back under the law. We're under grace. I've spoken on that before. In fact, if you want to watch on Periscope, um, I don't have a YouTube channel, I would say yet. I've been pressured by a bunch of people that have a YouTube channel. I just haven't felt led to do it. Um, that could change. I don't know. Like, I'm listening. Like, 
Um, so I've spoken on that before, but if that is what you think, that I'm trying to bring people into the law, then you don't listen to what I'm talking about. Um, we're supposed to worship God in spirit and truth, which means not just in grace, but also in truth. Um, you know, I've used many, many scriptures to support um, and present what I do that the Lord has showed me, just like everyone else has their take. Um, I've changed in terms of my, my faith. Like Peter says, I'm adding to my faith. Um, I'm growing in my sanctification by the grace of God. Yes, by the grace of God. He um, provides this beautiful process of sanctification that allows us to grow and mature in our faith so that we're equipped for the battle. Um, newborn babies can't battle. They need to be discipled. They need milk and then they need meat. And they need to learn how to walk before they run. So I've been doing this 20 years, meaning, you know, and the first 12 were like a um, lukewarm sort of a train wreck. But I'll tell you what, it was a beautiful train wreck. Um, very quickly, my life was so great, you know, built a, a, a amazing practice, um, became extremely successful from a worldly standpoint, got to the top because that was my goal. And I believe God let me do that over years to teach me a, an incredible lesson that once I got there, it was so empty. And then I cried out and said, God, why do I feel empty? Look, he got my attention by showing me that the worldly pleasures weren't going to satisfy what I needed in my soul. Um, so I, I, I pray that if you're loving the pleasures of the world, I, pr I pray that it brings you an emptiness that causes you to cry out to him. Um, if you have family members that are antagonizing you, um, I'm going to pray for you tonight because I've been through that. But let me just share this with you. Family members can be the roughest because those are the people closest to you that you love the most. And when they don't understand you, they can hurt you deeply. I've been curled up in a little ball on the floor crying my eyes out because someone in my family spoke such anger and nasty things against me. And But I needed that. Not, and then it stopped bothering me as much, not because I became apathetic. Now don't, please hear me out. Don't become apathetic, okay? When you're broken like that because your family's like that, um, yes, even the people closest to you, it can be a spouse, it can be um, parents or children, it could be, a, you know, any one of those. Um, stay rooted to, with God, pray, ask him to change their hearts. Um, it's not going to happen because you pull down your Christmas tree. It's not going to happen because you um, start telling them, hey, I, I, I worship on Saturday now. You can do that. And I know there's young people on here too that like, hey, they're honoring their parents, right? But they're struggling because their parents don't, they don't get it, right? Um, they think you're trying to be a Jew. And I'm like, first of all, what's wrong with being a Jew? The true Jew is the one who's inwardly. Read Romans 2.29. And, um, you know, that, that if you start to look Jewish, meaning from a character perspective, from a biblical Jew perspective, um, then that's probably a compliment. Um, I always, you know, I, I've answered people in the grocery store and they saw my IDF shirt and they would say, hey, are you Jewish? And I'd say, my Messiah is Jewish. And they're like, what? Like, I've never heard that before. All of a sudden you're talking for an hour and you're sharing a different perspective. And they're like, man, I've been frustrated with my faith. I've never heard this stuff. And I'm telling you, a lot of people say that to me, man, I'm so, I'm so thankful for what you teach me. It's such a blessing. Those same people, like three, six months, a year later, are like, I hate you. You're a heretic, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh, like, okay. So I don't necessarily take compliments, you know, to heart. So don't think that I don't appreciate encouragement. I do. Um, but, you know, Luke 6.26 says, you know, um, woe to those who speak well of you. That's how they talk to the false prophets too. So I sort of engage um, and and don't mind the, the attack so much because, you know, it makes me realize that, okay, the truth is going to really get people upset. Not to get them upset, but to, you know, and I learn. Look, you learn. I've been upset by people too. And I'll, I always take it to God. So always take, if you're having um, anxiety or you're having anger or you're having sort of this like righteous indignation and you're mad at somebody for what they've said, take it to God. 
be like Moses and Aaron when they came, like when they opposed Moses and Aaron the, the court and uh, Korah and his, they, they came to him they hit the deck and they said you know and even when Aaron and, and Miriam came against um, Moses right on his face right and the Lord dealt with them the Lord's gonna fight your battles okay the Lord will fight your battles it's not gonna be your prowess or your knowledge that's going to convince somebody it's going to be the love that's inside of you for god and for their soul for their heart and if god tells you to like don't don't just reject them and say i'm wiping the dust off my feet like no like that's a different message that's like sodom and gomorrah the ashes like that's wishing hell on people and even when john says should i call down fire from heaven yeshua was like you idiots like anyway i'm paraphrasing but um but no our our heart should be to lead them to truth, to lead them to the one who can save them, to lead them to the Messiah, to lead them to the truth of God's word. And when that's energized by the Holy Spirit, man, because when you say, God, I will do whatever you want, like that's a practice that I make every day. God, you're my father. I love you. Please, you know, help me today. Like I can't, nothing can be done without your help. Um, in tears many times, but just thankfulness. You know, thank, thank you for another day. Thank you for... For sharing this truth with me father i want to do what you want please give me the grace give me the understanding give me the, the 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 peace that i need to endure the suffering whether it's emotional suffering or physical suffering or whatever type of suffering it is because it's real god please give me that because if you have that then the darts the fiery darts you you'll you'll have your shield right you will have the armor of god on and um Look, Yeshua said the enemies are going to be in your own household. If you read Matthew 10, you know, Isaiah said the same thing. So, you know, rejoice. I'll tell you this, rejoice. Even if you don't feel like it, say, Father, thank you. Teach me more. Please, give me more. I want to know. You know, and believe me, there's going to be people who when they have the, the crap hits the fan, you know what they're going to do? They're going to go, I remember what Mick was saying. I remember what you were saying. Like, hey, help me with this. It's, it's going to happen. And you'll rejoice in that because you know what? God is all about forgiveness. Okay? And what helps you forgive is that you've been forgiven. And if you realize where you came from and what you've sinned and how God is in his mercy, because if you see yourself as righteous because, because you feel like you're doing all these things righteously, he's going to go, okay, have fun on that. And he will, he will take you back. But obedience is blessings, curses for disobedience. It's not external. It's from your heart. So that's all I've got to say. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'm going to pray after this, but I, I hope that you're um, you're spending time with God and in his word because that's who's going to change your heart. He's going to give you understanding. He's going to give you the shalom, the peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit because our faith is not about food or drink. Romans 14, 17, right? It's about righteousness, which is following God's way, by the way. Righteousness, it's about shalom or peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeshua didn't, he's, he didn't leave us as orphans and he didn't say, hey, uh, do your thing, you know, do your own thing. He's like, I'm going to give you the helper and it's going to guide you into all truth. And that helper is going to give you the ability to walk the narrow path. And it's going to convict you when you fall off the path. So feel disconnected from God, cry out to him today, tonight. You know, we don't know if we have tomorrow. But just be a faithful, be available, and be teachable. Because really, those three characteristics will keep you humble. And they'll keep you from being prideful. And uh, like people go, Mick, you, you keep the commandments? I go, well, I try. You know, I try. And I think everyone should try. But if you're not trying, you know, what, like you're going to stay on the bench. You're going to stay on the bench in the ball game. And I want to get in the game. So if you guys don't want to get in the game, you know, sit on the bench. I don't know. I just, I want to be found faithful. I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Are we serving God and his authority? Or are we serving our flesh and the authorities of principalities or the powers of this world? It's a, it's, it's sanctification is, it's, it's not the cup of demons and the cup of, of God, right? Light and darkness don't mix. You know, it's a, a narrow path. There's narrow and there's wide. There's rock and sand. And, you know, Joshua said the best. Choose this day whom you serve. So, again, today, maybe you messed up. You know, repent. 
get back on the in the race. He wants to forgive you. <laughs> like immediately he wants to forgive you. So I pray that the Lord God is increasing and you are decreasing and the grace and peace to you from Abiyah, the Lord our God, our Father, and the Lord Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, be with you today and forever and always. Amen.